If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Thursday, April 4th, 2013. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. The University of New Mexico women's swimming team had a very successful season led by first-year head coach Kunio Kono. The Japanese native is not only working to bring the Lobos to prominence, but is working with one of Japan's best breaststrokers. And Coach Kono joins us now from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Coach, good to see you. How are you today? Good. How are you, Jeff? Good I'm doing you. very well, thanks. So, a uh, good season for the, the Lobos. How would you rate your first year as head coach there? Well, definitely I, we had a great season, and uh, our girls performed pretty well. And uh, I can definitely give them a perfect score for this year. Well, uh, from what I understand, there were a lot of school records broken, so that has to be a, a step in the right direction. How would you um, rate how the season went versus your own expectations for what you expected to have happen your first year? Um, definitely they overachieved my expectation and uh, we broke 27 school record on and on and on. Um, you know, like the person to next person or event to event, race to race. Um, they fought through pretty well in each meet and especially conference championships. But, uh, their commitment made up this great goals. Well, what is it like for you as a coach to see them dropping time, setting records, and 27 has to be like a record at every event. What is it like for you to be standing on deck and seeing them perform so much better than you ever thought they could? Well, that, that was a great time for me. And uh, I don't even take one stroke. You know, they're the ones swimming. And uh, they just gave me a very, very fun time. You know, um, they did their job the you know, entire year through it. And, uh, you know, I tried to help them, help them. And uh, they, uh, they gave us a uh, you know, coaching staff and, and great time for, you know, their side. So and I imagine the girls were just ecstatic to be able to um, have a season where they're basically shattering their previous lifetime best. Yes. So, um, give us an idea of two of your standout swimmers from this past season, if you can. I mean, I'd like there were a lot of them, I'm sure. Yes, we had a we had a lot of like lots. Of, pretty much everybody had a great season, and uh, it's hard to pick two. Um, if I pick two, we have one girl uh, from senior, Marissa Campbell. She's a captain, team captain this year, and. Uh, she had she swam 50 freestyle, 100 freestyle, 100 backstroke, all best time and all lifetime best and uh, school records and uh, you know 53 eight and 100 back. I know I didn't make any twice, but pretty you know close for her for sure. And uh, another one uh, is from junior uh, 100 flyer, Georgie Hobson. She swam 100 fly with uh, 53 eight, like more than one second best time and. Um, you know, those two led the team very well and uh, uh, brought to a strong team to con conference championships. Well, you had a diver go to NCAAs. It seems like it's only a matter of time for you'll be uh, able to go to the meet yourself with a swimmer or two. Right, yeah. I mean, a diving team, yeah, we have a you know, good team culture, and a diving team is always the best in the conference team, on the conference championships. And uh, uh, we have two divers this year. However, the one diver made the NCAA championships, and uh, we just need to catch up with you know diver. Now, this is your first head coaching job, correct? Correct. So, uh, tell me what it's like to be the, the to be finally in charge of a swim team. Well, definitely, uh, it's a lot of responsibilities than uh, being an assistant coach and uh, a lot of pressures. However, the former coach, uh, former team that uh, UNLV, Alabama. And Arizona, Jim writes to uh, Frank Bush that you know they taught me a lot of great things and uh, 
a lot of leadership and being a head coach or you know any anything about coaching. So uh, those things are gonna help me a lot this year, and uh, I just use that skill from you know the learn from them. So yeah, I'm sure it's uh, a lot of great lessons they, that you they have taught you. Uh, now you got to swim against UNLV at the conference meet. What was it like to to kind of race the team you had been with for nine years? Well, that was actually a very fun time for me because I know they're pretty good, and uh, most of the swimmers I coached, and uh, and then everybody I know pretty much, even I, in, you know, freshmen, I recruit them. So I know every single person, but at the same time competing against them and uh, try to beat them and try to compete and, and that, that, that's a fun time and uh, our girls beat some of them and I never beat before so uh, it was just a great time for me. Well you're an assistant coach at Arizona when Frank Bush was there have you um, had the opportunity or the desire even to uh, call him up these past few months and ask for any kind of help in what to do as a head coach? Yes um, I am Frank Bush, you know, Coach Frank talked once in a while, and uh, any, anytime I need help or any ideas or any advices, I call him up, and he always gave me a great suggestions, ideas, and advices, and so on. So, um, but uh, he's always taught me that, you know, just uh, this is for athletes, you know, this team's for athletes, so always trust athletes, and, uh, you know, they'll respond to me pretty well, so that's I did this year. Well, in, dis in addition to coaching the women's team, you've also got one of the world's best breaststrokers there, Naoya Tomita. Um, tell us how the relationship got started between with the two of you working together. Yes. Um, uh, first of all, I didn't know him personally, and I knew his name. He's a fast swimmer and uh, uh, ranked number one in the world in that two, 2011, I think, and uh, just right before Olympics. Um, uh, however, he had a bad, uh, not a great uh, taper for the Japanese Olympic trial, and uh, since then he didn't training, and he's kind of, uh, kind of out of my mind for for swimming, and uh, so uh, his coach called me up, and uh, if he can have a different environment to training, and uh, just a little more advice for him to look at, you know, top the world athlete you know, from the U.S. So I told him to just come over two weeks and uh, we'll see what's going to happen. And uh, he showed up and uh, he liked it. And uh, he's, he's been swimming pretty well. What do you like most about uh, coaching him? Well, he's very dedicated. Um, that He trained very hard. Uh, even though he said he didn't train last year and a half, pretty much, the, the once he's in the water, he trained 100 percent, and uh, he work. We work for the you know technique. We uh, work for the tempo, and um, you know just uh, his dedication to swimming is great. And I'm sure the women at UNM really like the fact that they're mingling with someone who was a world champion and and the fastest at one point one of the best breaststrokers in the world. Yes, definitely. That uh, he definitely helped our women's team. You know the. the our girls never trained with those like, top, top athletes, swimmers in the world. And at uh, same time, he's never trained with, you know, American swimmers or, you know, American college swimmers. So uh, they had a great time. You know? And then they, I think they helped each other. Well, next week is the Japanese World Championship Trials, and I'm sure Naoya is going to be really competitive um, in the 100 and 200 breaststroke. Breaststroke, as you know, is extremely competitive in Japan right now. What do you think his chances are? Yes, definitely a breaststroke is the hardest event in Japan to be on the uh, national team. Uh, 200 breaststroke, which is his best stroke, or used to be maybe, um, that um, they're taking the one spot already uh, for uh, third place in the Olympics from last, I mean, last Olympics, uh, Tateishi. Uh, so they have only one spot open for the world championships. For this year and uh, however they have a two spots for the 100 breaststroke so we've been training for more power swimming tempo swimming and a um, little more turns and underwater and so on for um, 100 breaststroke 
So it's being a being well known for the 200. Was it difficult to get him to make the transition to being more powerful and and have a faster tempo for that hundred? He struggled a little bit in the first, but uh, uh, he, again, like he's a great athlete. Once you know, weak training for the tempo, he gets pretty quick, and uh, he's pretty have confidence with hundred breaststroke right now, and uh, especially. Uh, he won a Shokos National in Japan in February. He went back home for five days, compete, and came back, and he won a 100-meter Shokos meter back uh, breaststroke. Well, I'm sure his confidence is really high, and it's probably a good decision to uh, give him the put his focus on the 100 because if there's only one spot, and you know, you've know you got the, the current world record holder, Yamaguchi, who's going to be among the people fighting for that spot, it's probably best to focus on an event where there's two spots instead of one. Exactly right. Well, I'm sure he's he's going to do well. Are you going to be able to uh, go over and watch him swim? Yes, uh, I'm planning to go back to Japan next week, and uh, uh, I'm going to watch his swimming, like being you know, just part of the audience, and uh, I just want to have fun. And then when you come back, you've got the long course season, and you have a lot of your ladies uh, committed to uh, working with you in the summer. Yes, uh, uh, actually, we have a. Pretty much half, maybe more than half the team staying this summer in the training and are ready to go long course training in the comp competition. So we're very excited. Well, it's going to be great to see how they back up their short course success with long course and um, how well Naoya Duznek does next week. So um, we're looking forward to it. And uh, thanks so much for joining us today. It was a really great pleasure talking to you. Jeff, thank you very much and thanks for your time. All right. See you later. See ya. All right, so that was UNM's Kuni Okono joining us on the Morning Swim Show. Be sure to stay with us on SwimmingWorld.com, on Facebook, and on Twitter for all the latest swimming news. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.